Welcome to In the Jump Seat with Jacqueline. In this series, we're going to meet the founder of a nonprofit organization. We're going to tour a bee farm, we're going to prepare some food with a world-class chef, and we're going to meet the owner of a small boutique right here in Okotoks, Alberta. So buckle your seatbelt and join me in the jump seat. Welcome to this episode of In the Jump Seat with Jacqueline. I'm so excited that we get to meet Art and Sherry Andrews. They're the owners of the Chinook Honey Company located in Okotoks, Alberta. We're going to be talking with them about all the products they're making while working with bees. Hi, Sherry. Jacqueline, so nice oh, to see you. Welcome, so great welcome to, to see our you. apiary, Chinook Honey oh, Company. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So we're standing close to an active beehive, <laughs> and I'm... Um, I see you're a little hesitant about this. I am this. a little hesitant. Uh, what's the worst case scenario? Because I'm not dressed to go over there. Okay, well, worst case scenario, I would say probably somebody's going to land on your shoulder or something and just stay still. The worst thing to do is start flailing your arms because then they know something's wrong. Okay, so, so no flailing, no yeah. flailing. That's the worst thing you can do when you have a bee land on you. Yes, exactly. Okay, So All right. you and I are going to sneak up on them. So you'll notice here we have two entrances, the top and the bottom, and they're busy at both. The uh, top box has got primarily honey in it, and in actual fact you can see that they're busy. They really don't care about the fact that you and I are standing here. So just for the record, <laughs> I'm standing near a beehive that's and, active. Yes, and I'm just I going to be relaxed. About it. And peaceful. Just peace and calm. And peace and calm. And nobody's landing. They're just coming in and out. They just... This is don't the craziest care. thing I have ever done. <laughs> they just don't care. Somebody's checking me out. <laughs> so I know that there are different bees and every bee has a, a different job. What is the bee that is flying around you? Yeah, or was? She could be a guard bee, but she also is realizing that we're not posing a threat. So what happens if you hit a bee? <laughs> what? As like if it's going to... A Apparently, Smack it? Yeah. Oh, it'll release pheromones and now the whole world knows. That, I, that I've done something wrong? Yes. Yeah. Really? And so then what will happen? Will more bees come to its rescue? Or? Yeah. Yes. Just in you. Yeah. Yeah. They're, really? That's when they get in defense mode is when they release those pheromones. Wow. The lifespan of a bee is actually only a few weeks. Yes. Is that correct? Six weeks. Six weeks. But the queen bee lasts for a couple of years? Three well, to five years, eh? Three to five years, okay. Yes, yeah. So how many bees do you have in there right now? Do you well, think? the rough number, yeah, I haven't counted them. We, <laughs> we brand them every spring, no. <laughs> I'd like to see the little... We chip them. The little <laughs> they, they often say that the estimate for one hive is roughly 60,000 bees. So <gasps> wow. that's, that's sort of the rough guess, yes. Okay, that's amazing. So you have guard bees yes. for the hive, and then you've got bees that protect the queen. The uh, tendons to the queen, they the feed her and everything else, yep. Okay, and then what else? What other kind of bee? Jobs are there? Yeah. You're thinking of applying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Inside, for the first half of their uh, short lifespan, uh, they do jobs within the hive. So that starts off with an attendant to the queen, a nurse bee takes care of the brood because the queen, she only lays those eggs. She's, you know, like they're out to the babysitter after that. Wow. So okay. uh, feeds them. Then there's also bees that are building new honeycomb because that is very important to store the, uh, the honey that they're bringing in right now. The breakdown in there is really fascinating because there's bees that make the beeswax, bees that actually design the comb, and individual other bees that build the comb just wow. in itself. So. Oh, somebody finally said, oh, came to say okay. hi. Okay, so now, so you're just going to talk to him and he's going to do her, work? Her, her. All the worker bees are female. Of course they are. Yes. I feel like I've kind of outlived 
the peaceful moment I can do inside of me right now. So why don't we go and check out the Discovery Center because you have this whole amazing center designed to do teachable moments for like, School programs, is that correct? School, general public, people who are thinking about beekeeping, not too sure. Uh, but just really to educate people about the whole fascinating world of honeybees and how we do our beekeeping as well. I thought I was going to get away with not having to put the suit on and go right in to see the bees. But um, that's not happening. I am going in. I'm going to go in with Art. Hi, Art. How are you? How come you don't have this? beautiful thing uh, on. I will put it on. Okay. Yeah, shortly, yeah. So what are we going to be doing in the hive? Well, what we're going to do is normally uh, every we week this. and this time of year, we're going to inspect every hive and see how much honey have they put in uh, over the week. Okay. And then if we need to add another box onto the hive so they can fill it up for the next week and we just go and check them. And uh, every week we'll usually put a uh, box on at this time of year. So in one week, they're usually going to produce about 40 to 50 pounds of honey this time of year. Wow, 40 to 50 pounds of honey mm -hmm. per, per week? Per hive, yeah, per hive. Per hive, yeah. wow, that's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Uh, you know, bees, like, I mean, they just have a really bad rap, don't they? Mm -hmm. yeah. They do, but they are so vital to everyday life for us, aren't they? Yes, uh, just about 30 to 35% of your food is uh, pollinated from uh, bees. Uh, wow. Mostly honeybees, there's other pollinators, but mostly honeybees. Wow. And uh, yeah, without that, uh, you know, you say, well, your cows are important. Yes, they are. But if they don't have something to eat, then of course they're not, they're gonna go downhill too, right? Right. So that pollination is very, very important for us as human beings, right? Uh, show me what you're gonna be doing. What we're gonna here. do is we're gonna light a smoker. And the reason we're, we're doing that is, uh, it, uh, smoke will divert the bees' attention from, because we're gonna take the hive apart a little bit and have a look inside. So it doesn't really put them to sleep. Like when we no. see on movies and they're yeah. like smoking no. the hive, no. it doesn't put them to sleep. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah, no, it doesn't I, dull them at all. No. It just distracts them. Yeah, that's right, exactly. It's, okay. It's a distraction and while uh, uh, you can do, you can go and take a look at them and, uh, and then put everything back together and leave them and okay. uh, walk away and uh, go to the next hive and so on. Let's we're gonna light the smoker here and then we'll, we'll put, I'll put the hood on and my gloves and we're gonna go to a hive and we're gonna take the top box off and we're gonna have a look. I'm excited to wear this really trendy outfit and go and pick some honey. So Art, is it true that they actually can recognize your face? Yes, and uh, if you're really calm around them and so on, they tend to get more used to you. The more laid back, you, you are the better it is. Okay, you so know. they don't recognize your scent per se. Oh yes, they, they do smell, yeah. Uh, especially if you happen to be drinking alcohol, they, that's a pheromone to them and that uh, gets them upset a little bit. Oh, so okay. You, you never want to drink when you're on the hive. Well, <laughs> well, that's a good thing to know. <laughs> so before we do this, we're going to give them some smoke. There's two holes in the hive. And the reason there's two holes is because they need circulation. And bees can cool their hive down if they stand in front of the bottom board and start fanning their wings, they'll suck air into the hive and air will go in this way. So you'll get the circulation. So they can cool the hive. We're gonna give them a little bit of smoke here just to let them know that, you know, maybe there's something that they should divert their attention. And this is our uh, top lid. This is our inner cover. And this here is a feeder. We normally leave it on all year round, but we fill it full of sugar syrup in, uh, in the fall so they have food for the winter. This is our trusted little hive tool. So because bees like to glue uh, the boxes together and keep oh. them totally sterile. And what do they call that? Uh, propolis. Propolis, and yeah. it is amazing. It's antifungal something, right? Yes, antifungal, antibacterial, antiviral. We'll give them a little bit more smoke. You notice that the white wax that they're building here? Yeah. Means that when we pull a frame out, we're gonna see some honey. Can I give them some smoke? Sure, you give them some smoke. I want to give them lots of smoke art because I don't. I want them to be really distracted. Okay. Is that good? Yes. 
Should I stop? That's good now, I think, yeah, that should do it. Okay. We're gonna pull one frame out that doesn't have any honey on it to show you what it looks like. And uh, I'm gonna get you to pull that out, but I'm gonna just loosen it up for you here. There you go. You can show the camera what it looks like. Oh, I could speak, because they can't really hear our voice. I suppose they can hear our voices. Oh, yeah. yeah but look at this. This yep. is so incredible. I'm so glad I'm wearing this. I just yeah. need you to know that. This is a foundation, which is made out of plastic, and they have the hexagonal shapes on it, and the bees will come in and start building the wax on it to build it up to make honey, so I can put honey into it. And here you'll see uh, how they're starting to build it up here. That is so cool. There's like a ton of like bees down there. Yeah, well, that old, all those boxes are full, full of bees. So Art, can just anybody come and do this? Put on a white suit and come and do this? We have uh, what they call backstage at the Hive every second Saturday and it's a three hour program. They get to have a briefing inside the Discovery Center they come out, they dress up, they get to touch the hive and do like we're doing now. When uh, they, you're finished with that, they go in and drink mead and they make lip balm. I never knew you did that. That's incredible because then you actually, from start to finish, you get to see the process. Yes. That is so cool. Yeah. yeah. So now, uh, do you want to take that frame out? Yeah, I do. So just on the ends, right? Yep. I don't want to bother them. It's okay. Oh, it's really heavy. Yeah, you know why? Look at all the honey Look at in all there. The honey. Wow. Wow, that is crazy. There's so much honey here. This is really heavy. So how much do you think this weighs? Uh, you'll have 10 frames in there and they're up around almost four to five pounds when they're full. They haven't been capped yet. You'll see there's the holes are still there and they're putting the honey in, but they're, they haven't finished it. When it's done, it's gonna to be totally capped. Now you're an official beekeeper. I am an official beekeeper. <laughs> now we're going to move inside and check out the rest of your beautiful place and see what the bees actually can produce besides honey. So Art, now that we've seen the beehives and what the bees can do, Let's see some of the product. Tell us about the product of what they can make. The bees can make uh, six real different products. Uh, number one is honey, of course. Of course. Um, beeswax, uh, pollen, okay. propolis, and royal jelly. And another thing that we get from bees that's very, uh, a lot of people don't know about is bee venom. Bee venom therapy is uh, amazing for uh, MS patients, uh, arthritis, and so on. And then, of course, uh, another thing that we can make with honey is wine. Say what? I honey wine. We're gonna make some honey <laughs> wine. We're not, we're not making honey wine today, but you can make honey wine, and that's why we're here oh, in right. front of the vats, yeah. right? Uh, we're the first uh, in Alberta uh, to make uh, honey wine and get our license uh, to do it commercially. Honey wine is also called mead, and it's been around... Uh, Since the Vikings. Well, even longer. They figure really? six to seven thousand BC in China. No way. Because bees have been on the earth for 125 million years and they've been making honey and if you get too much moisture in your honey and there's wild yeast in honey, it's going to make alcohol. <sighs> and there we go. It did become a drink of the Babylonians. That's where honeymoon, honey wine comes from because the male had to drink mead uh, every uh, day for one moon or one month after marriage. So they could have a male child. And then the Vikings, of course. Uh, and Robin Hood, yes. Friar Tuck. And that's where that came from <laughs> because the Vikings were in Europe, uh, pillaging or whatever they did. And there's a lot of DNA in uh, Europeans from the Vikings. Of course, they started making meat. And that's how it got rolling. So. Wow. Well, I find that really fascinating. Uh, and I love that you were the first 
Meadery, is that correct? First Meadery in Alberta. In Alberta. Mm -hmm. So I think that's great. So in Okotoks, Alberta, Little Okotoks, Alberta was the first place to make mead. Mm -hmm. So I think that's great. So what kind of honey wine can you make? Because it's not just one thing. No, there, there is several, several kinds, uh, uh, types you might say. It's all based on honey, water, and yeast. Uh, that can all change with uh, how much honey, uh, the kind of honey, because when bees are working different flowers, the nectar source is different, it's going to give it a different flavor of honey. Right, so of course. So by using different flavors, we can make uh, a different taste in the honey. Uh, and the alcohol content and, and the yeast that's involved, there's uh, several variables. It's not an easy product to make compared to wine or beer. It took me uh, almost three years to figure out how to get it to where it's uh, good enough to sell commercially. But we can do other things too. We can add fruit to that mead. And that's called a melamel. Okay. And whatever fruit you want, you can put in there. It depends on what you want to do. And then uh, we have another third kind called the methaglen. Methaglen is Greek for medicine, which means it's herbs or spices. And so oh, interesting. And there's, there's more varieties too, but it, it can go on and on. So. Okay, yeah. and here at the Chinook Bee Farm, mm -hmm. uh, you have several different kinds. Of mead? Of mead, correct? Um, probably about 18 now, I think, for sale. Okay. Um, on our list, we probably have run between 25 and 30, but uh, we don't sell them all. We just sell the ones that are going to be, of course, the best sales and uh, ones that have done well in, uh, in the competitions and so on. Okay. Yeah. And you have it down to a science. Like, how long does it take to make a bottle? Uh, usually it takes zero to two months, and that's from start to finish. Uh, there is, uh, once the fermentation is finished, we do filter it, and then, of course, we do bottle it here, and then we do let it sit for a little while. Uh, that gives it a chance to age, because uh, when you use pure honey, which we use, we don't pasteurize the honey when we make the mead, Therefore, it's going to be a preservative. We don't have to use sulfites. And uh, it lasts 15 years. It's not uncommon to have a well mellowed uh, mead. 15 years? That's crazy. Yeah. I just find it really fascinating. The whole, this whole uh, visit that we've been able to do with you and Sherry from the beehives to this has been really interesting to me and so educational. A little bit of entertaining too, but educational for sure. So why don't I uh, meet up with Sherry out in your store and mm -hmm. just take a look at some of the products that you offer. Sounds good. Okay, great. So Sherry, we've been able to visit the beehives and we've been able to take a little look at the mead section, the honey wine, but I see your store has so many things in it that come from the bees themselves, which is amazing to me. Of course, honey, but there's so many other things that happen from the bees. And your, your company actually started from just a hobby and now has grown into this amazing legacy or empire or <laughs> I mean it's well, that's, just really that's large but uh, we'd <laughs> it, like to think it is it for sure. has it's really grown into something it's it's definitely something that we've um, you know never totally envisioned this this uh, sort of uh, uh, legacy if you will but it's been a lot of fun and it's just been constant and really you know totally Part of it is honey. You can do so much with it. You've got to be careful that you don't try and do everything. Wow. Initially, we were trying to do things like making our own candles and um, doing all kinds of things. Um, but then we realized, yeah, okay, you can't do everything yourself mm. um, as well as a perfectionist like me would want. So, okay. you know. Yeah. Uh, but that's why we do also feature products, again, made from honey. That's the focus. Uh, but from other uh, suppliers too. But our commercial kitchen is busy all the time. Uh, I tell you, with jams, jellies, barbecue sauce, you name it. Um, we're, all yeah. from your own honey. Exactly. So I, I just find that fascinating. But I, I want to talk a little bit about COVID. So it wasn't a positive experience for so many people, but your little empire actually was 
doing some amazing things and moving forward. How did you navigate? It has uh, presented us with um, new customers who are bound and determined to support local. It's been good to be, you know, kind of on the other side of it, but right now I think we very much appreciate the fact, the support that we've had from, from uh, Okotokians primarily, of course, uh, but the folks from around Calgary, and now we're starting to see more people coming and traveling, and so our guest book, now we've got people from the Maritimes again, and that's Ontario, and, and so that's beautiful. That's well, we so haven't got great. our European visitors yet, or our American visitors they're yet. They're coming, but I know they're coming. They're coming. <laughs> so moving forward, like what is next? What do you see coming next for you and for your ourselves? place? Yeah. <laughs> or for Art and I? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so let's combine those two things. Well, we're always uh, thinking of, of something new and different. We've just opened the tap room on our patio. Uh, so we can serve mead by the glass or by flight or by cocktail. Um, so that's one thing. We've got some new secret products going in the kitchen. Uh, Ooh, I would really love to hear a secret. Uh, it might involve chocolate. <gasps> uh, but anyway. <laughs> I won't tell anybody. <laughs> There's always things bubbling away. Uh, you can't keep still. And like I say, it's, it's impossible not to want to do all kinds of things with honey. But yes, Art and I are getting uh, uh, a little older. And um, as much as we love working with everything, we, we're ready probably to hand the reins over and, and see if someone else can do as good or better a job. Because I'm sure other people uh, have, would have ideas on, on things to uh, help this company grow. So that's it for this episode. I just want to say thank you to Art and Sherry Andrews from the Chinook Honey Company for having us today. So thank you so much for, for just allowing us to be here and just taking a great tour around. Thank, thank you, you for your support of local and of Okotoks, Jacqueline. We sure appreciate it. <laughs>